Hello beautiful people, how are you doing today? I hope you are all well. I am. I'm fine, I'm, I'm pooped. <laughs> I'm just really gonna make the most of the next hour and just sit here. I may talk for all that time, I may not, I'm not sure yet. Um, because actually, you're gonna see this on Sunday and I know, because there's a ton of you watch Richard and Paul as well, their Sunday chat is delayed a day because they have a prior commitment. So <laughs> maybe I'll talk for all three of us today. Um, yes, Sunday, it's actually Mothering Sunday in the UK, today when you're watching it. Uh, I don't normally mention Mothering Sunday. I'm mentioning it today because I wanted to show you something lovely on my high street. I'm gonna show you a little teeny tiny clip in a second. It is of one of our florists. We are lucky enough to have two florists on my high street. Uh, one is kind of like a street vendor. This one is the posh one, the bricks and mortar posh one. But I spotted their window the other day and I just thought, chapeau, chapeau. What a marvelous effort um, with their storefront in the run up to Mother's Day. Now, I took this far. <laughs> it's quite noisy when I actually shot this footage. I apologise for traffic noise. It was a really busy time of day. However, because it's been rain, 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 rain here so much, I literally just had to grab an opportunity when it wasn't raining to get this footage to show you. Anyway, have a little look at this. Excuse the noise and happy Mother's Day to anyone. And you know what? You don't have to have given birth to a baby to be a mum. I don't have kids, but I've done a lot of mothering in my time. So yeah, happy Mother's Day to all. Anyone who's ever nurtured another being. Have a little look. Oh, I love this. For Mother's Day. <laughs> How tattoo theme. Busy traffic. Cute. Happy Mother's Day. What a great effort. Wasn't that an absolute brilliant effort? Loved it. Just reaching down for the basket of random chat. Yeah, I mean, look, it's commercial, isn't it? Um, although I think, you know, buying a bunch of flowers for someone once a year that's really nice. It's all the other tat I'm not into. So yeah, I know it's for commercial purposes, but I think above and beyond an effort, they must have a professional artist to do all that for them, I'm sure. Right, I've just noticed I look ghostly pale today, don't I? I've been too long without sunshine. We need sunshine. I think there's been one day of sunshine, really proper sunshine so far this year. I'm taking my vitamin D as usual. Even if we had sun right now, it's not um, it's not strong enough for vitamin D production yet. Right, what's in the basket of random chat? You know, it occurred to me the other day as well, I was just <clears throat> looking back over the last couple of months. I haven't had a little just chatty sesh for over a month. There's probably quite a lot in the basket of random chat to get on with chatting about just before I go into all my bits of paper, <laughs> I've forgotten what's on them. Um, oh, I'm going to save that right for the end because that's super special. Oop, don't want to send my glasses flying. Um, I have a couple of thank yous. Firstly to Jane, who has sent me a book. Oh, shadows. Somewhere Inside of Happy, Anna McPartlin no idea about this book. I don't know, Jane, it's kind of, it's a curious one. I'm not, I have, until I've read it, I've no idea why you've sent it. Thank you for sending it. It's definitely not something I would pick off, uh, you know, up in a shop myself. So, well, that's a good challenge, isn't it? I will, of course, let you know what I think of it or once I've read it. And then the other thing in the post, the lovely Vicky, 
you remember um, a few videos back I was saying how Becky had sent me some Caramac? <laughs> oh, it was so good. Vicky also sent me some Caramac. And... <laughs> Isn't that a fab? I can't tell if that is... I can't see anything. Um... Thank you so much, lovely. That's really naughty of you. I do, every now and again, I talk about things that at some point in the future, I'd like to pick something up. And I genuinely mean that I'd like to pick something up. I don't mean, I'm not, I'm not putting it out there for someone to go, ooh, and get it for me. So that's really naughty of you, but I'm so grateful. And when it arrived, I squealed. And the first thing I did was, on my front window i opened the front window because on the um on the masonry part of the parapet wall out there there's tiny little clumps of moss so straight away let's let's have a look at the moss yay thank you lovely but honestly that it was naughty the camera went down a treat the hand glass looking the magnifying glass is going to be great but please, folk, if I mention something in the video, do not go out and buy it for me. I'm just mentioning it as something for the future that I will hopefully, you know, find. Anyway, right, let's dive into the basket. It's going to be random. I know it is. Ah, this is random. Okay, so... Um, it's, I know some of you don't watch the book videos, but one of the books that's now in my shop that I read was The Bumblebee Flies Anyway. And in that book, oh, blah, it's a bit awkward. In that book, she lives down um, on the south coast near Brighton. And she was mentioning, I think they might have a couple. There's, there's a couple of sort of quite large tower blocks where they've got nesting peregrines peregrine falcons they return each year to nest there and i'd been thinking about this anyway because about three or four years ago i can't remember how long ago paul as in richard and paul told me about a pair of nesting peregrines a pair of nesting peregrines in um at ealing hospital I know it seems like the most unlikely thing, doesn't it? But these sort of concrete, quite brutalist, br brutalist buildings of the sort of 60s and 70s, they're kind of like craggy rock faces for the peregrines. So the one at Ealing, there's a sort of uh, a, a, a bit of a box on this ledge at the hospital and it's filled with gravel and stones because that's how peregrines nest. They nest on in rocks and stones. They don't, there's no feathering the nest with uh, peregrines. Anyway, it reminded me of them because it's around about now that a live webcam gets turned on. It's not on at the moment. I, I did check or I checked a couple of days ago. If you, <clears throat> if you want to watch them, the, um, if you go to YouTube and put it put into the search bar Ealing Wildlife Group. At the moment, they've got some clips of last year's nesting. I think they, if I remember correctly, they laid four eggs, three of which were viable. Did all three chicks fledge? I think so. But oh my goodness, it became my addiction almost in the morning because in the morning I sit down to do computer work so I spend a couple of hours first thing every day emails comments answering 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 and then you know any other business that I'm doing on the computer and it can get a bit like oh in my head in my head in my head so I get all that done and then my reward for doing that I sometimes do it before I start work Sometimes it's a reward for afterwards. I allow myself 15 minutes of peregrine watching. Um, so it's just, it's just a wonder, well for me, I find it wonderful to, you know, see this magnificent pair of birds return each year. The excitement, the excitement when the first egg gets laid and it's like, 
you kind of like, can I spot it? Have I seen it? Is there an egg there? I can't see. Is it an egg or is it just another stone? Oh, it's an egg, it's an egg. And then a few days later, oh, there's three eggs. They've got three eggs, woohoo. Um, and of course, of course, the first one to hatch is beyond exciting. And then it's hilarious watching the kids, <laughs> the kids growing up. Um, it's uncensored. So I will just say briefly, it's uncensored footage. It is a live webcam. So you do see the birds feeding. Uh, they like pigeons. So if you're squeamish, but then why would you be squeamish about an animal eating? We eat. Are we, are we squeamish about looking at people in rest through restaurant windows? You know, they eat. Um, so yes, that's all included. And also <laughs> the birds pooing. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so childish. It just makes me laugh when, <laughs> when one of it, they aim it over the edge of the box and it goes absolutely flying and you think, that could be someone walking into the hospital. I don't think it's in a public bit of the hospital. But in any case, don't they say having bird muck land on you is lucky. So, yeah, I was delighted that the, the Kate Bradbury book mentioned it. I'd been thinking of it. And then I think Paul then mentioned it himself in a Sunday chat. I have this wildlife camp, this live webcam. I have it bookmarked uh, so that from now like i said the the camera hasn't gone live yet i'm not sure when it will go live it's still quite early in the year and it's still quite chilly isn't it maybe it's more like from april but i anyway i will now as part of my morning routine i will be checking in on peregrine cam and i really 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 look forward to seeing this year's chicks hatching growing up to their funny antics getting big and beautiful and strong and then disappearing off to their new lives yay yay for peregrine cam right let me put that scrap there oh no i'm not going to talk about that just yet ah oh, okay this is a funny one uh these are this is really random today it's a big long chatty random catch-up have you got something to do while I'm nattering? Um, washing up, maybe? Or perhaps you're prepping veg for the Sunday roast? Perhaps you're sitting down knitting? Or perhaps you're going to be like me just for the next hour or so, just sit and do nothing. We've earned it. Right. Back at the beginning of February, <laughs> just all this year is going really quickly the beginning of february seems a gazillion years ago already but back at the beginning of february i thought right i need to get on with sorting out my hallway which also by the way um you are going to see it this week and i'm sorry for delay i haven't meant to be a tease in any way but I just had other videos to come out and there's a sort of a rationale to the order so anyway but yeah, back at the beginning of February, um, and if you remember, early-ish on, probably around about the 10th, excuse me a sec. I should have made myself um, a little mug of peppermint tea today. It's suddenly getting dark. It's only, it's only the afternoon, but yeah. Ooh, let's be cosy. Let's be concentrating, Vivi. Yeah, around about the, it was around about the 10th of February and I was saying about my brother-in-law had mentioned a kitchen cabinet to use for covering the gas meter. And, I mean, I, look, I keep an eye out in skips anyway. I love a good skip dive. But I thought, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I'll keep a lookout. And then, as if by magic, the most wonderful skip appeared very very close to my allotment so it's on one of the little side streets I turn down to get to the allotment and it's but it's just before I hit the park walk through the park to get to the allotment and as I was walking down the street I spied it straight away this and it's one of those big skips big skip piled up but from a dist even from a distance I could tell it wasn't just rubbish in the skip like plasterboard and builder's waste I thought, ooh, this 
this looks like a good one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I do get excited. Anyway, as I was drawing close, it's like, well, it's obvious there are no kitchen cabinets in there. Oh, shocks. But on the floor, propped against it, uh, oh, it's beautiful. Not huge, um, about what you might think of as A4, about A3 size. A beautiful Victorian picture frame, but it was gilded plaster work, just a plaster picture frame, absolutely gorgeous massively knocked about and beaten up um really quite beaten up but i kind of i kind of love stuff i there's something about ruins and decay i find beauty in that anyway or i find beauty in that too it was gorgeous and you know they're quite quite pricey collectible things when they're in decent condition i thought I'm having that. I'm so having that. And I was really close to the allotment. I thought, right, I was just going down to harvest some, I can't remember what I was getting, probably just some leaves. Anyway, but I thought, right, quickly get to the allotment, drop off some more cardboard, pick a few leaves. I'll be out. I'll be back out in front of this house in 10, 15 minutes. I'll have it on my way home. Brilliant. You know what I'm going to say, don't you? I come out of the park, do it, it, it's gone. I said, oh, that's the thing with skip diving. If you see something that's perfect, you <laughs> grab it. Um, knock on the door, just check first. Please, may I go in your skip? It had gone. Anyway, then a couple of weeks later, so just in the last few days, um, I was over at Kai's, uh, just having a little chatty catch up. She was asking me how stuff's going and, and getting the flat ready to sell and we got onto the subject of the hallway and I said about the kitchen cabinet I haven't seen one the skips lately have been rubbish so I've built a cabinet myself I said but oh oh because it's right on the corner of her street I said have you seen that skip outside number 45 and she went oh god it's, what a great skip she said she said I think it was the first day it was there oh my phone's been really ignored she said I think it was the first day that skip was there you'll never guess what I found oh <gasps> Oh, gorgeous Victorian plaster, ornate plaster, gilded plaster picture frame. And I went, was well, that you? <laughs> She's like, what? So I told her the story I've just told you. I said I was literally gone about 10, 12 minutes. In the time I went to the plot and just came back, you'd had it. And she went, yep. <laughs> anyway, so there's a lesson in that, isn't there? If you... Um, if you're a, a, um, a skip hunter, a skip diver like me, then, yeah, if you, see, if you see a good skip, just get in. Don't waste any time. Um, what should we... Ah, oh, yeah. That can all... Right. Let's have a little bit of a catch-up about um, some of the stuff from previous videos. Remember I had the... I had all those kind of freebies because I was buying my wild deodorant. I ended up with all sorts of freebies. So the first thing to say, let's talk about the wild deodorant first of all. I really like it. Um, and obviously this is not a paid promotion. <laughs> um, if they want to pay me to promote them, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I really like it. I think I was happy with the deal I got in terms of it being a sort of a starter kit, getting the getting the holder and the three the three different flavours. I I like the feel of it, how it goes on. It's really easy to use in terms of the refill, all that. It's easy to use, it's easy to go on. The the scent is lovely. That first one I picked was called Purple Rain. And I think it's got a little tiny bit of patchouli in. I like this kind of dark woody notes. What I really liked about it, I'm on to, I'm already on to my second one now because by the time that video came out, I'd already started a few weeks. My videos are a bit delayed at the moment. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so this next, what I like is, so I've tried two different smells now, is... The, the scent, it's really sort of clean. It's a lovely clean smell, but it's not overpowering. It doesn't smell that kind of 
cloying chemical perfume smell that I can't stand. I remember it in the changing rooms at work. People were spraying and there's this, and I just, uh, I can't breathe just this kind of perfume chemicals. Uh, uh, uh. So I like the smell of them. It's, it's very gentle and subtle. And in terms of efficacy, <laughs> um, little maybe TMI, I quite often sleep with my <laughs> arms up here for some reason. I don't know why, it's just how I fall asleep. So then in the morning when I wake up, my head's lolled. <laughs> so, so you can see what I'm getting at. When I wake up in the morning, my nose is very close to my armpit. <laughs> I don't snore. Apparently I don't snore. I shared a room with a lot of people. I mean, share a room. I'm talking like, you know, with my sister or whatever. Nothing kinky. Um, anyway, yes, yeah, so it's... Um, so even by the morning, if I didn't have a bath the night before, I'm still fragrant. <laughs> Shall we put it like that? I'm still fragrant. So yeah, I really like it. It works. And that's ultimately, that's the main thing, isn't it? I want it to work. And I want it to be, you know, as sustainable as possible. It comes in a little cardboard tube. And then the whole thing, when it's finished, can go in the compost. Great. Now, when I got it, I had absolutely no idea that it was available on the high street. Why would I? Because that's not the kind of shopping I do. Because for years I've been getting my deodorant from Lush. And I don't go into places like Boots, Superdrug, all the other places holding about. I don't go into any of those places for for any of my toiletries. So I've got an itchy eyeball. You know, I don't go into those places for shampoo because I buy my shampoo bars and I either get it from the health food shop, the plastic free shop, what have you. So though all the high street chemists that we all know of, um, I just don't go in them. I, I pop into my local boots once a month for my prescription. I have pain medication for my knees. That's once a month from boots and that's it. So I had no idea. Anyway, I mentioned in a video a few days later that I'd noticed that Holland and Barrett had an, an offer on online and I thought, oh, maybe it, it, ooh, it's on the high street and then in response to that video a lot of you said to me oh you know tesco stock it sainsbury stock it suddenly it's like this is great this is this it's fab if all these main mainstream shops if you like are are beginning to stock what used to be considered a bit of a, a bit of weird hippie stuff that i had to go elsewhere for how great so um, the Holland and Barrett, it was a really good offer, three for two. I didn't need any at the time. But I thought, again, that's through the post. And I really want to do this shopping face to face. Because also it's that thing of waiting in for a parcel. Will it fit through my letterbox? I just want to get on and, and get the things I need when I need them. So as it happens, I have had my annual mammogram. Keep checking yourself, girlies and boys, because, you know, boys get breast cancer too. Uh, yeah, I've had my annual mammogram, and where I go for it, I go for it, it's not in my immediate vicinity. And I was on the bus going there that morning, and I thought, oh, I'm pretty sure there's a Holland and Barrett in this village, these London villages. And sure enough, there was, but it was quite small, and they don't stock any of the sort of deodorant type stuff they just stock protein powder for all the bodybuilders i live in an area of bodybuilders you can tell i don't um so they didn't stock it but i was like okay well i've checked anyway and then on my way home from there the bus tips me out at, right at the top of the hill so coming down the hill i thought i'll go and check my little sainsbury's and it's just too little. They don't stock it. I went to the Tesco. Tesco doesn't stock it. I went into the Boots. Boots don't stock it. And I thought, oh no, looks like I'm going to have to buy it online. But the there's a super drug near me, and it's actually quite a quite a decent sized one. All the shops on my high street are as big as my front room because I'm the width of the shop. 
Um, so they're all quite small shops here, which is why I think one of the reasons they lean towards being the small independent companies, because they're little shops. However, the super drug is, is it the equivalent of two houses or three knocked through? Anyway, it's bigger. And they stock it. Yay! They only have two flavours. Oh, I'm so tempted. They have the cotton, which is one of the ones I, I've chosen for myself. Lovely. And, but I don't know if I could stand this all day. It would make me hungry. Candy floss. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I smell like candy floss. Oh, I want to go on the waltzes. Let me go on the dodgems. Okay, for friends outside of the UK, I think, who might call candy floss cotton candy. You know, the, the, the pink spun sugar you get at the fairground. Yeah, if, I, if my armpits smell of candy floss, I just, in my head, I'd be thinking of waltzes, bumper cars. Oh, the merry-ground, the horses, the carousel. I'd be thinking of snogging inappropriate boys. I'd be thinking of that smell of the trampled grass. You know that smell when the fair comes to your town for a week? Oh, I loved the fair. The fair that used to visit the town that I grew up in, it always parked up in the field near school. So I had to walk past it on the way to school. Yeah, and then on the way home from school, oh, there was something about those fairground boys, you know, the ones that spin the waltzes. They're just... Oh, they made me get a bit fluttery. There's something back. They're kind of rugged and dirty boys. <laughs> Sorry, going off at a tangent. You see, that's what happens. That's what could happen if I wore candy floss, pit perfume, deodorant. Um, anyway, to get back on subject, I know that I can, within a five minute walk of my front door, I can get my sustainable deodorant. I don't need to do it through the post. And... The fab thing is, where the deodorant stack is in that shop, it's right near the window in the street. And with Superdrug, it's very obvious when you go in, um, when they've got an offer on something, the stickers change from white to bright pink. And I was thinking, that's great. That means if they do a three for two or a two for half or what, you know, if there's an offer on, as I'm walking up and down my little high street, I can just have a little look in the window. And if I see the bright pink sticker, I can think, oh, today's the day to go in there and stock up. So yeah, highly, highly, highly recommend it. I recommend it because it works, it's sustainable, and it, you know, it's available sort of locally. Or you might be someone who goes to one, like, with Sainsbury's and Tesco, mine are tiny ones. But if I go out of town a bit, two miles on the bus, there's a massive one. They probably do stock it. So if you're the kind of folk who go out of town to one of those big ones, check it out. They probably stock it and um, hopefully picks them up while it's on offer. Good stuff. Uh, the... Ta -ta -ta -ta. Ah, yeah, now the small washing liquid. I won't be getting that again. I've used it. The wash was perfectly good. Sorry, excuse me. It did the job perfectly well. But two things. One, I found out later on. Um, it it does, the ingredients do include petrochemicals. Mm -mm, that's not for me. And two, the perfume... It was overwhelming, really, really strong scent to it. I don't, why, 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 why do people want their clothes to stink like an air freshener? I don't know. It was too much. So yeah, it, it washed well, fine. In terms of packaging, great. There's no plastic, it's reduced packaging. But for me, in terms of my buying, my green buying, if you like, there's way more to it than just getting rid of plastic. So the combination of petrochemicals and a really pongy, artificial, that's what it is. It's this, it, these scents that are added to things that just stink like something artificial and horrible. So yeah, that's not for me. That's fine. I shall go back to Bio-D. Um, 
Oh, also on the subject of sort of money stuff, um, well, they were kind of money stuff because they were freebies. Well, the wild deodorant wasn't. Um, yeah, do you remember I was mentioning how I got an absolute shocker of a bill for my insurance, my contents insurance, and it was the equivalent in the last two years of a 39 39% increase. I thought, I'm not having that. So just as a quick follow-up on that, I know someone in comments said, oh, you should ring them up and haggle. Well, I did last year. I did ring up and I did haggle and I got nowhere and I'd been on hold for about half an hour and I thought, I'm just not going through that again. I can't be bothered. My precious, precious time. And then at the end, we told, no, we're not going to reduce it. So... I shopped around, as you know, and I found a much cheaper um, provider. Went back to that comparison site to then get the link for that quote I'd been given. And in theory, the next bit was really easy <laughs> to a point. So just a few more bits, a few more tap, tap, taps of the keys online. Get my card out to pay. Done. It was really easy. But there was a bit of a hiccup, pardon me, it wouldn't take my payment, it wouldn't finish the transaction. Now at first, um, I, I was looking all over for help, for assistance, I was looking for a phone number, and all I got was one of these, what do they call them, virtual assistants. Hi, oh, hi, can I help you? I'm your virtual assistant. I got nowhere with it and in the end I said to this virtual assistant, please can I speak to a human, I need a phone number. And it gave me a phone number in fairness. So then I went on the phone and it carried on being a bit convoluted and it's because there's a flag against my name when it comes to insurance. So I said to this guy, I, I don't understand because I've, I've never claimed. And it's true, I haven't claimed. However, five, in 2019, so five years ago, I made an inquiry and that's enough to red flag me. I lost my camera. Um, I, I lost it at the allotment. I just couldn't, anyway, I lost it. The thing is, later on, it turned up. Someone was cutting some really long grass it was there it was Kai Kai who found my camera for me and I was so glad because there was a little card the card that was in it had some really sweet footage on it, it was six months later anyway I rang my insurance company um at the time to say I can't remember am I insured for things outside of my home and I think it turned out that I wasn't insured for things outside of the home anyway. And at the time I said, well, it doesn't matter. It's not to worry because my excess is 250 and the camera was only 290 or something like that. It's not worth it. But OK, at least I know for definite that I'm not insured outside of the home. Thank you. Bye bye. Just that inquiry increased so remember I told you I got a really cheap deal and it's still cheap it's still less than half the price of my old provider but it did pop it up it popped it up by about 10% so purely for inquiring that's now going to cost me more in terms of insurance and I guess for the insurers it's telling them that I'm I'm clumsy or forgetful I lose things so I'm a higher risk just don't call your insurance company unless you absolutely have to. Anyway, it's still much, much less. Now, so I went ahead, did it, that's all done, brilliant. And then in the meantime, I've rung my previous provider um, to say, don't renew, I do not want to be renewed, it's far too expensive. And I said, look, it's gone up 39% in two years, you cannot possibly justify such increases. And he said, and like with that, with hardly a beat, he said, oh, well, let me see if we can get that down for you. Yeah, oh, yeah, we can get it. So it went from one minute, they were asking me for 140 quid. And then he hardly paused for breath and he said, oh, we can bring that down to 117 for you. So why are you charging me 140 if, like that, 
it can be 117. Anyway, I said to him, look, it's not your fault, I'm not having a go at you personally, but honestly, the new deal I've got is still half of that. So no, forget it. Anyway, he was then a bit abrupt with me, but I mean, I've been polite to him. I did say thank you for trying, at least trying to get it down in cost for me. But yeah, so that's all dealt with now. That's all, all my new insurance kicks in. I've got all my documents. It hasn't started yet, but I've got all my documents. Great. I did write to the old company as well to say do not renew. So that's now by phone call and in writing. I'm going to keep an eye out on renewal day though to just make sure they do not take that money from my account. And if they do, I'll be really, really grumpy with them, but politely. Uh, right, that's that. Ah, oh my goodness. Right, I need a swig for this. So as you know, I haven't, hang on, I've, oh, what's my pipe? Oh no, I'm keeping that for later. Keeping it. All right. <laughs> Sorry, me, me, my little notes that go in my basket for random chat, they're just, uh, they've gone a bit everywhere. So as you know, I haven't started actively looking at properties yet. I don't know when it will be. I don't know how long is a piece of string. I'll do it when I'm good and ready. However, <laughs> I... Where I live on my high street, where I, when I walk up to the bookshop, I pass three, hang on, one, no, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Can't go anywhere for estate agents. Anyway, so I pass estate agents all the time. And I just flick my eyes over the window, just, you know, see what's what, keep an eye on prices, because some prices have come down. Um... And I saw a property the other day and I thought, oh my God, <laughs> this is it. I found it. Ground floor flat, south facing garden. The photographs of the kitchen was beautiful. It's about twice the size of my, it was a big kitchen, big, actually more than twice the size. No upper cabinets, I hate uppers. So it's all, it, it just some lower cabinets and they were just shake, very simple shaker style, painted a sort of flat sage color, like my bathroom color, um, ceramic butler sink, oak counter, oak butcher block counters, very simple. A scrub pine dresser, French windows out into the south facing garden, a table and four chairs in the kitchen. It's like, oh my god, it's brilliant. One bed, bedroom was decent size, but a ton of storage. The drawing room really big, so I could have easily had space for relaxing and space for a sewing table. And this is brilliant. Now, it was a recent reduction. So it had been reduced to my top end of my, my top budget. It's right at the top. And I thought, well, you know what? Decor wise, I wouldn't need to change a thing. I could in time, but I wouldn't need to. I wouldn't need to put a new kitchen in. I wouldn't need to put a new bathroom in. It's per this is so me, it's unbelievable. So it's right at my top, top end of my budget. But then I noticed the small print, it said offers over. And it's like, well, if you want an offer over it, say what you want. Because let's say, it's, um, th these aren't the prices I'm looking at, but let's say it was on at 450, but they actually want 500. And it says 450 offers over. Well, what about 451? They're gonna say no, they want 500. I hate that thing, offers over. What price do you want and make it clear? Anyway, but that wasn't the end of it. So I came home, I was on my way to do something. When I got home, I went online to look at all the photographs, the, 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 the floor plan, all of that kind of stuff. And then I saw the problem. It wasn't a ground floor flat. That's what they have advertised as, ground floor flat. It's a basement. It's the basement flat. There are 12 concrete steps at the front down and then the flat. I mean, the flat is gorgeous. And if I was, if this, if it was me 20 years ago, looking at this place, I'd, I'd go for it without batting an eyelid. But 12 stairs down, no, 
that's the whole point of moving is to get rid of stairs. Anyway, I'm, I was immediately disappointed, but also I thought it sort of has said to me that, you know, I'm starting to be ready. I'm starting to be ready, which is great. Cause if this, if that had been this time last year, I probably wouldn't have even looked. So that's good. That's a positive. Um, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a weird bag of emotions, isn't it? There's that having something in my mind's eye. So I saw that. I think that might have been the day I went for my for my mammogram actually, because I didn't look online straight away until I got home. I think it was that day, and I had images of it in my mind, and I could see myself there. And that's the whole point, isn't it? And if you can see yourself somewhere, the whole thing becomes way less scary and terrifying, way less. Because I, I mean, I could literally imagine myself just taking my life from here, putting it in there and carrying on. Easy, it's easy. So the moment that is snatched away because of those stairs, and don't anyone try and encourage me and say, oh, you, what a stair, but a stair lift. It's on the outside of the property. It stairs down on the outside of the property. It's high enough up a hill, by the way, for flooding to not be an issue, because that's the other thing with basement flats in terms of flooding. But um, I just do not want stairs. There's no point in moving if I'm just going to have more stairs. But anyway, um, yeah, so it's... Uh, so some momentary excitement and now I'm back to that thing of I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know where I'm going, I don't know where I'm going to be. Uh, but I keep just reminding myself of that moment with that little flat. Obviously it wasn't right, but just that sense, that change of attitude, the minute I could see something and picture it. So that's what I keep reminding myself today and other days when I'm feeling wobbly and terrified about the whole process i keep saying to myself yes but vivi that's only because you haven't seen a picture of your new home yet and once you've seen a picture of it shh, be rockets you'll be rockets firing on all cylinders and all whatever rockets do but yeah i wish um i just wish the estate agents i haven't had time to pop it i kind of want to pop into that estate agents and say please change it from at least write on it lower ground floor, even if they don't want to write basement, because basements have got, I think there's some negative connotations, but write on it lower ground floor. Because when you think of ground floor, you think of access that's level with the street, and this isn't, <laughs> it's like you fall off a cliff. Right, oh my goodness, I've been nattering for ages. So I just want to finish on something really, really, really special. And I might get a bit emotional, but that's okay, um, because emotions are okay. So, um, I can't remember whether I'm, I might have mentioned this at Christmas. I certainly would not have mentioned it around my birthday last year. But, um, so my birthday is... Last year, my birthday was on Tuesday... My sister's birthday is on Thursday. We're two days apart, our birthdays. And she died on the Wednesday in the middle day, on sister day. Now, at the time um, last year, I didn't, I didn't really celebrate my birthday. I wasn't bothered because, um, you know, there was just too much going on. And I knew she was... <sighs> It was obvious she was in her last days. I'd seen her like a couple of days beforehand. And she'd um, she'd actually been, there were some words on that day, so it was great. And the plan was I was going to go back on Thursday for her birthday so we could have a little day of birthday together. But as you know, she died before she got to her birthday. And it wasn't, it was kind of a couple of weeks after and I was thinking, and definitely by Christmas, I was thinking, I really missed having a present from my sister for my birthday. Now, I don't mean that in a spoilt brat way. It's just that 
and gosh sorry it's just that as adults we kind of we, we stop giving presents, don't we? I mean, I think we we may do at Christmas if we see each other. But I think for the most part, you know, as we get old, like when we're kids, we get loads of presents for our birthday. Yay! And then it all stops, doesn't it? But my sister and I have always, always loved buying presents for each other. And, you know, the number of times, I think I did mention this, maybe at Christmas, I'm warming up now, that she'd buy me something that she kind of wanted herself. And I'd do the same, I'd buy her something that I really wanted myself. So we had some, a definite crossover in taste. This was my day book she bought me, not last Christmas, Christmas before. Uh, it's, yeah, it's become, it, I, I had been using it as a day book. It's like, <laughs> my, bits, my, my lists, my jobs. It's turned into something else now because I want it to last a bit longer. But yes, yeah, so she bought me that. <laughs> she wanted it herself. It's like, you've given it to me, get off. But yeah, we so we've always really enjoyed buying each other presents. And I mean, literally everything she's ever bought me has been perfect. It's just so perfect. So it was always a joy to look forward to to opening, you know, on my birthday. And, and like I, I mentioned before, there were so many times, because our birthday is two days apart, where we try and meet up, or even if it wasn't on our actual birthday, like the year when we did our, it was 2022, it was the summer of 22, God, it's amazing, it was only a year later. Anyway, we had the Auntie Teapot's last road trip. So we went to collect Auntie Teapot from Kent, to take her all the way up to Yorkshire so she could be sprinkled in the woods with the rest of the family. And that was, I think we did it, it was like the end of July. So we didn't even have to ask each other, like at the beginning of June or whatever, about our birthdays. We both knew that we'd delay our birthdays and we'd, we'd do our birthdays together in Kent, yay! Um, yeah, so, uh, Always loved receiving her gifts. Always perfect. Always gorgeous. Always lovely. Do you remember this was another of hers? Oh, loved it. Book of Pebbles. Beautiful. I love it with all these gorgeous illustrations. That was for my sister. Oh, this was a this was a sis present. Seaweed Chronicles. I gave her. I gave my sister a couple of years ago waterlogged that's in my shop so yeah we've yeah just fab fab presents backwards and forwards between us and and it doesn't even have to be a birthday or christmas so i'm getting the <laughs> doing a ronnie corbett today no one's in a hurry is anyone in a hurry look you know what if you're in a hurry then my channel is probably not the channel for you anyway don't like hurrying with anything. Although sometimes I think, yes, do. Okay, I'm gonna to get to the point. Um, yeah, so, you know, July last year went on and I thought, and as, as the dust settled a little bit, was that kind of real sense of, I'm never gonna have one of those gorgeous, perfectly chosen gifts from my sister ever again. I'm never gonna get a sis prezi. Don't worry, I'm not being maudlin and I'm not being spoiled. It was just the sadness of it because I enjoyed it so much. And then when I was in Swanage, if you remember, I, obviously then I took some of her ashes to Swanage. Some of her ashes stayed in Yorkshire. To, she had two, um, two scatterings in Yorkshire. One, when the heather was out, because she loved being up on the moors when the heather was out. And then a second scattering, again, up on the moors, but when the moors were covered in snow, because she loved, absolutely loved being on the moors when the snow was covering. And then of course, so she's up on the moors and she's also um, on the beaches in Dorset. So yeah, I think it was that time when I was in Swanage especially that beach day, it was the perfect day to just do a lot of thinking and reflecting and what have you. And I thought, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm jolly well gonna get us, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give myself a present from my sister. 
You know, it doesn't make sense, does it? So around about then, I, I put a £10 note into a secret little pocket in my wallet. And I thought to myself, right, I'm not going to look for a present from my sister to me. I mean, it's that's what I mean is I'm going to pay for it, but I want to find something that it's the kind of thing that my sister would see it and think, oh, that's perfect for our Vivi. Anyway, so that's what I did. I stuck a ten a ten pound note in a secret little pocket in my wallet, and there it sat. And I thought, at some point, something will speak to me, and it will be the perfect thing. I'm going to get all emotional now. It's happy emotional. Um, the perfect thing has found me. So I have finally got a Christmas present from my sister because I absolutely know, I absolutely know that if my sister, it's a book, walked into a bookshop and saw this book, she would, <laughs> she, she would jump over other people to grab it if it was the last one. She would pick this book up and say, that is absolutely our Vivi. I'm getting that for my skinny blister, <laughs> skin and blister little sister. So this beautiful book, I, in my mind, my sister has chosen this for me because I know she would. And I can't wait. I can't wait. It's called... I might have to turn the camera off in a minute. This is happy. This is happy. The Mindful Art of Wild Swimming. Reflections for Zen Seekers. Oh, is it, I mean, I mean, it's perfect, isn't it? It's perfect. I, like I said, I just know that if my sister saw that in a bookshop, she would go, she just, that's it. She'd think, oh, that's Vivi's Christmas present sorted. Um, it's a beautiful, I think it's brand new. Um, but yeah, the, the all sorts of chapters. I'll tell you more about this when I've, when I've actually read it and then I can tell you, <laughs> and I won't be quite so emotional. Uh, but the chapters are Taking the Plunge, The Solo Swim, Swimming with Friends, Swimming Adventures, Reflections from the Riverbank, Water Wisdom. And then I loved this bit. There's a section at the back for further reading and I had a quick look and I was thinking, yeah, read it, read it, read it. So I was going down and I thought, oh yeah, Haunts of the Black Masseur. Oh, I've got my little mouse on it. My mama Katie mouse, Haunts of the Black Masseur. Yeah, read it's been on my, sh my shelves for 20 odd years. I carry on down it, dirt, dirt, dirt. Water log, ah, yeah, <laughs> got it. Carrying on, carrying on. Wild swim, Kate Root. Yeah, I won't get them all up. Yep, yeah, there it is. So there's a so there's a really lovely reading list. Ring of Bright Water, Gavin Maxwell. Read that already. But one of them she mentioned is also, and I've got this in my shop, but I haven't read it, so I might have to take it out of my shop to read it myself. And that is the cloud. I love the cover. Look at that. The Cloud Spotter's Guide. I guess. If you're swimming on your back, you can spot clouds. Most, well, pretty much every other wild swimmer I've ever, ever, ever seen, they swim on their front. They do, um, well, if you're sea swimming in particular, you have a very choppy front crawl. Oh, it makes me breaststroke. When I'm in the water, I'm always on my back, gazing up. Anyway, so, thanks, sis. It's so perfect, isn't it? I love, I love those moments in life that are just perfect. And it sort of reminds you how the, the special things, the beautiful things in life, it's not about a fortune, spending a fortune. It's not about your fancy pants foreign holidays and da da da. It's about the simplicity of a beautiful book that speaks volumes. It's about the simplicity of sitting on a beach and drawing pictures in the sand with one's finger and one's hair in <laughs> ratty tails full of salt. All of those things, these simple, beautiful things that we can 
immerse ourselves in and which can, you know, fill our souls to bursting. And none of it's about money and spending. It's about just making the most, making the most of life. So yeah, thanks sis. Can't wait to read it. Can't wait to let you all know about it in, um, oh, sorry, it's pardon me, itchy nose, in one of my book chats. But I think for now, I did think I was going to sit here and sit here and sit her, her, her. Um, I have got some other bits. No, they can wait for another day. I think on that note, because for me this is this is joy this is absolute pure joy on so many levels my sister feeling that kind of connection still swimming water all of this is so much joy i want to go off and wallow in it for a bit i want to go and lie on the sofa and start reading this after i finish work today so yes let us leave it there and maybe just sort of make that promise to ourselves to say yes I'm busy yes I need to work and I need to pay the bills and I need to do all that and da 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 but I also need to sometimes just stop and appreciate something it could be as small as perhaps you are a mum and you were given a bunch of flowers today that uh, appreciation of a beautiful flower, appreciation of your children, of course, but appreciation of the rain clouds scuddering off and the sun coming out for a few moments and how that light changes everything. Mood. <gasps> oh, you know, yeah. I'm promising myself today, right here with all of you, that I'm going to make sure there are enough moments like that this week to keep my soul topped up despite the fact that life and the universe and all the other stuff that goes on tries to deplete it I'm going to keep it topped up so happy topping up your souls your joy your whatever however you want to think of it uh yeah happy topping it up so my lovelies I will leave you today and let you know that the next two videos are all, well, next video is to do with fabric and sewing, but it's for something for the haul. And then finally, you're going to get to see the haul. It's now done and clean and lovely and yay. And so I can start to think about the next project. But not right now. <sighs> Me and sis are going to go and <sighs> just be quiet on the sofa for half an hour. Until the next one, lovelies, cheerio.